their mentality from depressed, suicidal, no purpose in life, horrific grades, a relationship they shouldn't be in, cutting from the nasty business going in their head with the nasty pop culture to just a week or two later taking my challenge, how these teens said, I have a purpose in life. I ditched the negativity going in my brain. I'm finally realizing my identity is not what in, what is in the information I'm feeding my brain. You've heard of soccer moms, but have you heard of the counterculture mom? Today, you'll meet her. Activist Radio, The Mark Harrington Show, is brought to you by Created Equal, and you can support our work by going to MarkHarringtonShow.com. So, folks, if you're a parent, today on the program, we're going to be talking about getting your marching orders in the culture war to defend your children from the influence of pop culture and Hollywood. In order to do that, my guest today is Tina Griffin. And she is the counterculture mom. Tina, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. Yes, prior to having four children, I wasn't a mom, and we had to make the name switch. We, we got to get America back on track. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's good to have you. So um, a little bit of background here with Tina. She's uh, from Wisconsin. In fact, she went from baling hay and milking cows on a dairy farm in Wisconsin to working in, as an actress in Hollywood. Uh, at the age 20, she drove 2,000 miles west and enrolled at a California State University of Los Angeles and pursued a film career. But today, her mission is to educate and equip parents and teens on how to safely navigate today's pop culture. So, Tina, I mean, tell us a little bit about that transition. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> Living in Wisconsin, what motivated you to pick up and move to California? Well, really, it, it, when I gave my life to the Lord at the age of 16, I just knew I didn't want to be a bench warmer Christian. So mm -hmm. I want to be active in the game. And if I could skip sleep, I would. And I pretty much have skipped a lot of sleep over the years. <laughs> but right. when I was 20, yeah, when I was 20, I was at the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay. And there was a flyer on the wall that said ex international exchange program is what it said. And they considered okay. Hollywood international. And so I transferred to Cal State Los Angeles, went for TV and film degree, broadcasting degree. But the thing that really drove me there was I hated being lied to. When I saw mm. celebrities drinking and driving, I remember Jason Priestley, when I used to watch 90210, and I thought all the celebrities were hot, had them all at posters on my wall. I'm like, Jason Priestley's awesome. And then I read a story about him going 80 some miles an hour, smashing him, his car into a tree. And I remember telling my mom, I want to go to Hollywood and reach these celebrities for the Lord. They are going down the wrong path and not only their lives, but everyone they influence. My mom's like, you're crazy. My dad's like, no way. You know, I'm on a dairy farm driving a tractor. And so at 20, I said, I'm, I'm out of here nicely, packing my suitcase, heading to Hollywood in a Toyota pickup truck that was falling apart. And my dad never left the farm, but he threw clothes in a suitcase with my mom. He's like, we got a couple hours before she's out of here. We're following her 2,000 miles west. And they did. I just told him, stay away from my rearview mirror so I can pretend this journey is my own. I went with a girlfriend, and then she went up to law school to Oregon from L.A. And my whole mission was to expose the lies that these celebrities were promoting in film and TV so my generation and future generations would not believe their identity was based on a facade. And it's been so one you went out there with that motivation. I mean, obviously, you became an actress and, and was successful in Hollywood. But did you go out there with that intention to reform Hollywood? Because that's a big I really, job. I really did. My whole mission was to become a Christian version of Oprah and a Christian version of Julia Roberts. That's always what gotcha. I told myself. I said, I want to get to that level of celebrity status just so I have some listening ears and followers to say, hang on a second and then share the truth. But God totally had me be like an undercover FBI agent for a decade out there. And it was different than what I thought, but I'm so glad that I was exposed to what I was exposed to so I can do what I'm doing now. And so when was it that you came back to Wisconsin? Never did. Once I left, my blood thinned. I could not do it. When I came home for Christmas, I was there for like 72 hours. I saw 300 girlfriends and hung out with the family, and I had to get back to the warm weather of California. I'm dying now, and I'm in Nashville. 
<laughs> All right. So the, my guest today is the Counterculture Mom. And folks, you can find out more by going to counterculturemom.com. And you can find out more by also, uh, also looking at the, uh, the content in our uh, pages in our posts. So let's jump right into the mission of the Counterculture Mom and what your vision is uh, when it comes to Hollywood, uh, you know, the mainstream media, all of what's going on. I have uh, grown children now for the most part. I have my oldest now is 18. So we've we've got them through all of this. Thank God for the by the grace of God, I think <laughs> that they haven't been totally corrupted by all the media. But when you were out in California and you were, you know, you're part of all of this and you saw it going on, a lot of people say that, you know, this is it's overblown. It's really not really as bad as you think. And it's not impacting children the way that people say it is. You're just a conspiracy theorist. You're a kind of a nut bag. You don't really you know, this isn't really happening to our kids. How do you respond to that? Well, I would first tell people, look up what conspiracy theorist actually means. And in the last two years of the COVID chaos, yeah, there's a lot of people that are now saying, you were talking 15 years ago at this assembly or this parent event or this cruise ship or prison. Can you go over what you said again? I'm now finally connecting the dots. And I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I think that with the COVID caused a lot of people to wake up and I'm so glad about that. But it's not a conspiracy if you are there on set and you're witnessing some very demonic stuff. These producers of a lot of these Hollywood movies and TV shows I'm just going to say it like it is for the lack of time that we've got. They were doing seances. And I was in L.A. working as a casting intern at Universal Studios. And I could write a book just on my one year as an intern at Universal Studios of what these people did to shove the trash that they were putting on air. And that was 20 years ago. Fast forward, we now have Travis Scott, the tragedy that happened in Houston just a couple of days ago. And if you would see the footage, people tuning in, if you haven't, Check out the footage. It's flying around, not on mainstream media. They're covering up the case. These fans were, it was a total chaos scene rushing into here, a professed demon possessed celebrity on stage mm -hmm. that yeah. was doing satanic moves. So a lot of these teens and young people today are following celebrities that are right out in the open, admitting who they follow and why they do what they do. But there's a lot of positive pop culture that's out there today. And when I speak in schools and I challenge the teens to change their media diet just for one week, ditch the negative swearing filled beheading video games and cop killing video games and the graphic sex filled lyrics of music and movies. It's amazing, Mark, what I've got bombarded with. And I kept every email in the last 22 years of speaking around this country and, and around the globe of how teens told me I just tried it for a week or I erased 300 negative, you know, nasty songs on my iPod or mm -hmm. I at 20 years ago, they, I have a bunch of CDs that were smashed and they, these kids made a cross out of it on my wall to remind me every day why I do what I do, that their mentality from depressed, suicidal, no purpose in life, horrific grades, a relationship they shouldn't be in cutting, from the nasty business going in their head with the nasty pop culture to just a week or two later taking my challenge, how these teens said, I have a purpose in life. I ditched the negativity going in my brain. I'm finally realizing my identity is not what it, what is in the information I'm feeding my brain. And these kids are on fire. That's why I do what I do. And today, because of COVID, it's backfiring on the global elites because people are waking up and wanting more in their lives. And that's what's getting me pumped up along with our counterculture mom team to keep sharing what we're doing because we're finally getting people to connect the dots. All right. My guest is the counterculture mom. And you're listening to Activist Radio on the Mark Harrington Show. Uh, Tina, let me ask you this. Why is it that uh, young people idolize Hollywood celebrities, musicians and so forth? My 18 year old, you know, was raised up with the smartphone. My older children really didn't have that so much as a temptation. It is such a hard thing for a parent to monitor what comes through that phone into the eyes and ears of our kids. We have all the, you know, all the filters built in. We have all that in there. But I tell you what, they still break through. What is it about this that is so alluring to our young people? 
Well, the things on the top of my head, according to what teens have told me even recently, is a lot of them feel like when there are porn apps that are out there where you can post yeah. illegally jump on and post pictures of yourself and make, I'm not joking, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in a matter of a week. Mm. Kids are after easy cash. That's why we have issues with young people trying to work hard and work for 15, 20 bucks an hour at a, and, and learn a trade. We have yeah. that. We have the glamorization of the lifestyle. You've got TV shows and movies and even the uh, reality shows out there today with these celebs and their status. And kids just want to become famous, not realizing you sell your soul in the process. Mm -hmm. As a lot of these celebrities are now talking about, they sing about it in their lyrics. Um, they, they talk about it when they're being interviewed. And so yeah. teens aren't realizing that you really don't want the lifestyle that comes with it. It leads you down the wrong path. And a lot of these celebrities are in drug rehab. Um, their lives are, you know, three or four marriages. It's a mess. Well, you know, I, I've noticed lately that uh, young people don't live their lives. I guess older people don't either live. You know, you go to an event and it's what you post on social media. That's the important thing. It's not that you were actually there enjoying the fellowship or the event itself. You've got to post stuff about it. You've got to be someone you're not right. I mean, you're 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 pushing someone out there that really isn't you. And that's what this whole culture has taught our young people. Um, and I, I'm just really in, very concerned about folks uh, and their parents. So you got we're listening people listening right now. We've got parents, moms, dads who are listening to the sound of your voice, and they're, it's resonating with them. I'm sure of that right now. Uh, let's get to the practical. What can they do to protect their kids from the influence of pop culture and Hollywood movies and all these nasty lyrics? The top thing that I think every parent needs to do is pray for their kids and pray mm. for protection, but pray for discernment. I have four kids that I homeschool. I love them dearly. They're almost 13 on down to eight. I've been homeschooling wow. them since they. How do you do it all? <laughs> How do you um, do it all? I wasn't doing it well until recently. This week I hired an editor and I wanted to cry yesterday because I was putting in 60, 70 hours a week with this ministry. I had mm -hmm. a team of 20 people that I, I pay. There's no volunteers because I want to let them know they're appreciated. But, and then I would homeschool these four kids. Now the older three do do online with Abeka. I love Abeka. It's a Christian based God filled curriculum. Love it. The mm -hmm. younger kid, I get to rein her in and do face to face or she's all over the place. But I want to give them a better America than what I even had when I was a kid. And I'm willing to take a bullet for the cause. I've said that for years. Mm -hmm. And who knows, in this day and age, I might be taking a bullet for the cause. But <laughs> I want Christ coming back or me going home to see the Lord face to face, doing what he's called me to do. And every parent out there, it's worth the blood, sweat, and tears to make sure your kids are protected. But pray for discernment because my oldest kid who's 12 is coming to me now saying, a kid across the street, we were just playing ball the other day and he's, He's listening to, you know, uh, Eminem or listen off to different singers that, you know, mm -hmm. Travis Scott. And my son is now telling him about my app. Kids are downloading the app and they're getting information from our team. So it's interesting how we can't keep our kids in a bubble. We have to let them know what's going on in culture, but we've got to teach them scripture every day. My husband does devotionals with mm -hmm. our kids. It's a must. Mm -hmm. But it can't be boring devotionals. That, that's what I had when I was a kid. My mom read the Bible every day, but how does it apply to pop culture today and the world we're living in today? And so my kids are coming to me with pop culture issues. Stuff's going to flash up on their iPad. We talk about it. They come to me, say, Mom, look at what they're doing. You got to blast us through the app. And parents, I'm telling you, I have 80 to, to 100 tabs always open on my website. My team does as well because we find out about information ahead of the game. There are times where people text me a, a picture and say, you got to report this. I'm like, you just took a screenshot of our app. That's our app. Thank you for letting us know we pumped it out. It's hilarious because we want parents to have the power back in their hands to know exactly what's going on with pop culture. Like this story we just blasted out on Travis Scott. We want parents to know first so they can shelter their kids. We will help you not have so, to have 80 web tabs open. It'll be in your hand through our app. So let's yeah, let's talk about the app. Uh, people can pick it up on any of the app stores, right? I mean, you can go to yeah. iTunes, Apple, right? What is it? I mean, what does it do? 
for for someone? I mean, mm-hmm. is it something you put on a, 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 one of your children's uh, phones or something that's more or less just a uh, resource for parents to navigate this whole thing, the pop culture and Hollywood and what what to do? Uh, what what is what does the app actually do? Well, over 25 years doing a ton of research myself and now with the team, I know the top places I trust that are Christian based or even if they're not Christian based, positive entertainment options. We know the featured educators that we have in our app are doing what they're doing well, like Ken Ham with Creation Museum and everything he pumps out to blast the lies about evolution. We've got um, people talking about marriage, Mona Corwin. Um, We've got Alex Newman talking about the Great Reset. All the questions parents are asking We have partnered with a good 20 to 30 other people in our country that know what's going on and are helping create counterculture warriors in the home. So that's our featured educator section. We also also have a resource section for suicide, cutting, positive video games, positive comedians, positive TV shows. But the best spot in our app is when people click on the premium section and they go to pop culture alerts. Every day we're blasting out two to three of the top pop culture awareness alerts that parents need to know a video game that was just released or coming out a tv show or a movie that's awesome you got to go see it with your family because if kids are watching or listening to 20 70 hours worth of media every single week and they're in class in school which i say homeschool whole another podcast for 40 our kids are primarily being educated and their worldview is being shaped by pop culture hands down and so we have to get the so there are culture. reviews. So so what, I'm, what you're seeing basically is that there are reviews of TV shows and other things, movies Absolutely. on the website. Yep. On this app, the Counterculture Mom app, within two minutes for busy parents, they're going to get the alert. What is it? They can watch a video if they want to watch a video about it. And then at the bottom, we are solution driven. They're going to get the talking points to have with their kids, a bunch of positive entertainment options instead. Or if it's a positive entertainment option, how to view it for free, where to buy the DVD, all of that fast, easy for busy parents within five minutes. And then they can talk with their kids. Hey, hang on a second. I just heard about blah, blah, blah. Is this what's going on? Is this in pop culture? And then it opens the door for communication with our kids where they can say, I've, I've heard hundreds of stories, Mark. Parents are like, we used your app. We talked uh, about a talking point at dinner and my son was actually playing a video game. I had no clue he was playing. And now we got him a positive games. The swearing went down, the better grades, the better communication, all of it as a result of understanding the media diet that needs to go into our children as we're uh, raising them to follow Christ and not Satan. <laughs> My guest has been Tina Griffin. She is the counterculture mom. And you can find out more by going to Mark and look into the, uh, you can just look at the show description. We've got the links to her website as well as a link to picking up the counterculture mom app. Tina, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. And one last two second thing. If they text the word guide to the number 55444, guide okay. to 55444, they will get a free parent media guide filled with hundreds of positive entertainment options. Parents love it. Appreciate it. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much, Mark. All right. So friends, I want to dive into the mailbag. Uh, some of our listeners have written us and they sometimes leave a question or a comment. And I want to read those on the air. So if you're interested in uh, communicating with your radio activist here, Mark Harrington, then you can go to MarkHarringtonShow.com. There's a tab on the right side that says leave a comment. And I'll read that question or comment on the air and answer uh, your questions there. Here's one uh, from the mailbag coming from Tony. And Tony says this. Whether pro-life or pro-choice, every opinion regarding abortion is subjective uh, and thus irrational. Given that reality, what right does any man have to impose this view on this topic upon any other man? That's Tony again from the mailbag. It's interesting. Tony says, starting out, that whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, every opinion regarding abortion is subjective. Well, that isn't a subjective comment or question. (laughs) He's being very dogmatic and very uh, non-subjective there, very absolute in uh, in his statement. That aside, he talks about and says that, uh, what right does any man have to impose his views on any other man? Well, it's interesting that Tony's a man, apparently, right? I assume that he is a man. It's kind of ironic that he's, kind of imposing his views 
on me by writing that. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing is that when it comes to men having a view on abortion, often we hear from those on the pro-choice side saying that men shouldn't, that this is a woman's issue only, and that men should just shut up and sit down Well, and, and be quiet. Well, here's the problem with that. First of all, it's what's called an ad hominem logical fallacy, an ad hominem logical fallacy. And that is ad hominem means attacking the man or attacking the person. Rather than dealing with the issue often, uh, a, a means of argumentation, a very poor one, is to attack the person rather than the argument. We find this all the time. And we need to be able to think and discern, be able to identify ad hominem uh, logical fallacies and remind people that it, it, you cannot make a case based on the person who's, uh, who's presenting it. That has nothing to do with it. Uh, that's what we call an ad hominem logical fallacy or attacking the person. And so what we need to be doing is attacking the issue or the proposition or the argument that they're making rather than the person. So when he says, if you're a man, you can't take a position, or how can you tell other people or other men uh, about abortion? Um, so the issue is this. Arguments don't have genders. People do. Arguments don't have genders. People do. And we need to evaluate someone's argument based on the merits of that argument, not the person giving it. And then finally, when it comes to abortion, uh, men should have a voice for several reasons. Uh, the first is that men, real men, protect women and children. They don't abandon them. They don't kill children. They defend them. They protect them. Uh, and that's what men should be doing. And I submit to you, there wouldn't be that many abortions if men would do the right thing. And if they uh, were to get a woman pregnant, they would stand by them. They would not abandon them and take them to the abortion clinic or, or pay for the abortion and kill the baby. So real men protect women and children. And then finally, half of them are men. Half of the babies that die every day in America are male. That is, they have male genitalia. Therefore, they're men. They're male. And we should defend uh, men as well as women. So these are the arguments we can make. If you're a pro-life man and you have someone say, well, what right do you have to speak on this because you don't have a uterus or whatever? Uh, one of the slogans by the pro-choice people is no uterus, no opinion. You can respond this way by saying, first of all, that is an ad hominem logical fallacy. It's attacking the man or the person rather than the argument itself. Um, and number two, that arguments don't have genders, people do. And number three is that men have to or should stand up for women and children. And so that's the answer I would give to Tony. And uh, if you were interested in sending us a question or comment, you can go to our mailbag at markharringtonshow.com. One final one here. Uh, this was more of an encouragement or a comment from one of our listeners and viewers. And uh, this is from Chris. Chris said, sometimes it seems like we're in a hopeless battle. It seems we're grossly outnumbered. Uh, he says, he goes on to say, keep in mind the power of one, one soldier, one commander, one general, one pastor, one Christian, one believer can make a difference. And I say amen to Chris. Thanks for sending your comment into our program. Again, MarkHarringtonShow.com is where you can find out more. And we have a new design of the website that's uh, out today with digital only episodes of our podcast. If you want to subscribe to our podcast, you can go to MarkHarringtonShow.com. You can listen to them right on the website because there is a, a, a video player or, or I'm sorry, audio player right there. Or you can subscribe to the podcast there at MarkHarringtonShow.com. And please leave your questions, comments, submit a question or comment on the home page, and I'll read it on the air and answer it for you. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast by going to markharringtonshow.com. And also you can register 
for our email list. So you've been listening to your radio activist here on the Mark Harrington Show. And uh, we are providing you your marching orders in the culture war. Again, go to MarkHarringtonShow.com, subscribe to our podcast. And also, if you have time, you can listen to this week's uh, podcast with Samuel Say, who is a uh, an expert in critical theory. You can listen to that podcast as well. We'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember, America, to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to make a difference for the cause of life, liberty, and justice, go to createdequal.org. To follow Mark, go to markharringtonshow.com. Be sure to tune in next time for your marching orders in the culture war.